From the truckload quoting page within TIE TMS, you can create a new shipment and to instantly display your historical lane average alongside all of the market leading rating intelligence tools. In just a few clicks, you can adjust the quote, add your margin, select your quote response template, and email an official quote right off to the customer from the same page. Request a demo today at tie-software.com to find out how TIE TMS can optimize your quoting process. Welcome back to another edition of Chat Call. Today we're covering Ryder's approach to a freight brokerage. Don't forget to subscribe to Chat Call the newsletter on FreightWaves.com if you have not already. Before we dive into our guest interview, there is some news in the world that you should check out. Target is opening distribution centers in the Houston and Fort Worth areas, aiming to speed up online orders to customers in spite of their continued growth. The company did not provide any further information about these new facilities, but a report from the Houston Chronicle said that the distribution hubs include a 1.2 million square foot facility at the Beltway 66 Logistic Park in Southeast Houston and a 1.4 million square foot facility at Generation Park northeast of the city. John Mulligan's Target Executive Vice President and COO said the company plans to open six extra sortation centers in the next few years, including two this year. Earlier this month, they announced the expansion of the sortation network to more than 15 facilities by the end of 2026, Mulligan had said during a press conference. These facilities have transformed how we move inventory with speed and precision to guest doorsteps. This week's sonar chart of the show is our flatbed flat outbound tender rejection index. The 100 days of summer is only a few weeks away, and with that comes a rise in flatbed loads. Homeowners begin to get houses ready for the summer, and construction season begins, and produce has to move. All the extra demand for flatbed loads would normally push up spot freight to for existing flatbed shippers, but seeing as how rejections are at the second lowest rate for the last six months, it seems that spring has not sprung in the increase in rates, which is fantastic for those shippers still looking to lock in some spring and summer contracted freight work. Rejections are the early indicator for spot rates. When they fall, rates fall and vice versa. Outbound tender lead times have dropped to two days for flatbed loads. Locking in contracted rates now would be the smartest idea to continue to optimize operations and implement any cost-saving measures. Today we are joined by Dave Stone, Senior Director of Transportation Management, and Victoria Tommy, Account Executive at Parade. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. So before we dive too far into everything, um, let's get some background on you guys and kind of how you got started at Rider and Parade, respectively. So, David, why don't we start with you first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started at Rider back in 2020. I joined during the pandemic um, and came in to, to really lead the brokerage from the standpoint of growth and what could the brokerage really become. Now, <laughs> we didn't know that the pandemic was, uh, was going to hit so hard in 2020. Uh, so it's been a fun three plus years uh, of doing this. Um, uh, but couldn't be more excited and couldn't be more proud of uh, of really what we've built in a short period of time here at Ryder. I think that you didn't not knowing what the pandemic was going to hold might be the most big the biggest understatement of all of 2020. Uh, but Victoria, how about you? How about you? How did you get started at Parade? Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, Victoria, Tommy, I'm the account executive here at Parade. I've been in the freight industry for 12 and a half years. I got my start in LTL transportation, and then about. Six years ago, I made the the jump over to freight technology, but I've been with Parade for about a year now, and I joined them because of their ability to really streamline and consolidate a lot of the brokerages, operations, processes that they, they have, as well as their tech stack. They're doing all of this while, while giving the ability to win more loads, as well as build better carrier relationships. So that's what made me make the jump over to Parade. I like it as a uh, as a former LTL person myself as well. Um, I find that a lot of the people that are in LTL uh, just kind of flock towards some of those process improvements, those optimizations, um, just because it's something that honestly the LTL world could use a little bit of. <laughs> I can understand that. I lived on an AS four hundred for eight years. <laughs> Hey, I that is a very underrated skill to have to basically be able to navigate an entire computer just using your keys without a mouse. It's it's a good skill to have. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. But moving away from AS400 and some maybe some outdated technology. Um, so 
Uh, Victoria, why don't you kind of hit us with, uh, well, you kind of already introduced Parade, but why is it such an important addition to the Rider Free Brokerage? Parade, really, we're, we're turning the heads of many. And as of today, we have a lot of brokerages that are utilizing our services, and we work with a lot of the big names in the industry. But with that being said, Parade, we are the leading capacity management, uh, capacity management platform out there. You might be wondering what capacity management is, and that's simply being able to digitally source and secure capacity at the right time for every single load. But I'll, I'll quickly give you a, a framework of what Parade is. So imagine the second that a load comes into the TMS, Parade is already in the background and we're automatically going through all the data signals that we track through multiple locations and platforms. And we're matching the best qualified carrier to every one of your loads. But while we're matching the carrier to your loads, we don't stop there. We're pushing these loads out simultaneously to those matched carriers. And we're presenting them the load offers and giving them the convenience to digitally transact, whether that be through quoting or through booking. But there's a couple of great things that happen when you implement a successful capacity management solution like Parade. The first being that you're going to increase the number of trusted carriers that you're working with. So this means less risks, less double ch less chances for double brokering, less one and done carriers, less issues, and better margins. But you'll also see an increase in your data enrichment. So if you have a lot of reps, a lot of offices, a lot of branches, this is for you. You know, this is going to this is going to increase the data flow, meaning that you're no longer going to lose out on a load opportunity because someone else had capacity in your office and you didn't know about it. This is also going to help develop better carrier relationships. It's going to increase carrier reuse. And this is also going to help increase rep productivity. What we've seen is that when implementing Parade, it reduces the amount of time spent in a rep's day-to-day -day operation. In a weekly time frame, they're saving about 10 to 15 hours, which gives your reps more time to take on tougher loads. It gives them more time to take on more shippers, develop better relationships, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, really, a, a technology like Parade, we fill in the gaps of a TMS and we act like a layer of intelligence. We are constantly getting smarter. We never get sick. We never take vacations. We never skip a beat. So really, Parade, it increases your level of service, not just to your carriers, but also to your customers. I like that. It's kind of, um, I mean, I'm like we said, anything that helps a brokerage run more efficiently and um, honestly, anything that's going to cut back on any chance of double brokering, considering how rampant of a problem it's become. I think that's really the key, um, you know, moving forward to, you know, build a more secure, sufficient and um, safer supply chain. Dave, how did this addition of Parade kind of impact riders' relationship with suppliers and carriers and shippers alike? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I think if you, if you kind of back up in terms of what Rider Brokerage is, so I indicated I started back in 2020. Uh, the brokerage has actually been around for 20 plus years. Um, it hasn't really grown in nature though. So if you think 2020 in terms of what we saw and what we were experiencing um, and the amount of growth that really a lot of brokerages were going through, we did the same thing. We went off and, and hired a ton of folks and increased the numbers in our offices. Uh, we opened up our Nashville location last year. Um, so you have a lot of young talent um, that doesn't necessarily have logistics experience, doesn't necessarily have uh, what this market is and this market being a, you know, a COVID-driven market or what we're experiencing really in 2023, which is kind of 2019 levels. So because you don't have a lot of this kind of market experience, um, what you end up with is you end up with care or with uh, with folks that are simply calling the first carrier they can get a hold of and booking a truck with that carrier and not really paying attention to anything else. Now, in 2020, when freight is abundant um, and you're winning a lot of loads, getting that carrier on a load quickly, probably okay. But as you start to think through now where the leverage really falls back into the brokerage's hands um, and you really can ensure that you're getting every single carrier that is the right carrier every single time, um, you have to have some additional technology into this. On top of that, Rider Brokerage is a cradle-to-grave model. So if you think about this, where do my account executives really make their money, so to speak? They make it talking with customers. They make it engaging with customers. So if I am 
allowing them more opportunity to talk with a customer versus having to deal with going through multiple carriers often to try to find that perfect carrier. And then it ends up being a one and done carrier. I'm not really making them more efficient. I'm not really putting more money into their pocket. So when we partner with a partner like Parade, really some of our goals are to have repeat carriers, right? Get the same carrier on the load multiple times. So you start talking about reloads. You start talking about the ability to build out carrier relationships. Uh, number two, get away from spreadsheets. A lot of our reps deal with carriers on a spreadsheet level. And what's the best carrier? Well, I have a spreadsheet and it says this guy likes to run it. So try this guy. Or the third way, let me send an email to the entire brokerage. Does somebody have a flatbed carrier that likes to run out of Sioux Falls? Well, you may or may not get some from the brokerage if they're nice. Uh, but more often than not, that AE spent time sending an email, going through a spreadsheet and still calling a random carrier on DAT for a one and done uh, load, right? So Parade gives us the ability, number one, to see all of our executed data. Number two, to ping our pricing engine so we can set the strategy on that. And then number three, really build out that carrier CRM that, uh, that the brokerage needs to expand, especially as you're building out a brokerage with a ton of young folks that, uh, that are coming in with no experience. I cannot stress this enough. It is 2023. Let's stop running our supply chains on Excel. It's there are much better tools out there. Don't get me wrong. I love Excel. I love a good formula. I love a good, I love a good data analysis in, in Excel. However, that's not what we should be running our supply chains on. Maybe like our household budget. Sure. Um, supply chains, let's let's move away from that. If we can all just work to just be a little bit better in 2023 to move away from Excel-based supply chains, I think we're all gonna be better, uh, better off for it. Um, so I guess. The common phrase that we have around here is automate what you hate. So taking those, you know, the the time consuming tracing down BOLs, implement or putting something through the system so that way someone gets paid, all those little time consuming tasks, or even, you know, calling around like you mentioned, trying to find someone to haul a load. So in what like I guess Victoria, with parade the implementation of parade, about how much time on average are individual carrier sales reps you know, looking to save in their day-to-day -day from not having to send an email to the brokerage, call a whole bunch of people, hope that they have capacity, or, you know, maybe go into yet another program and yet another screen to look up three different ways to price something. Right. Well, across our active users, our first-year customers have seen, have seen metrics of 30% more loads booked on average and 10% of their freight being booked digitally. Um, because of that piece, I mean, if we're if we're eliminating at least 10% of their work every single day where they don't even have to lift a finger now, that could be hours. You know, again, right, we're, right where we're pacing is about 10 to 15 hours per work week that we're giving reps back in their day to take on tougher loads, build, build better relationships, whatever the case may be. Have, Dave, have you kind of seen the same results as since you guys have implemented Parade where, you know, your workers are getting more done maybe in less amount of time and maybe we're able to end up upselling more or finding extra customers as a result of this, you know, free time that they have now? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think uh, I think you hit it on the head there, right? I mean, my my reps, because they own the life of the load, I need them to quickly move out of the carrier side and quickly move into the customer side. It's, you know, in, in order for us to continue to grow our business. And I mean, brokerage isn't rocket science in terms of how do you grow it? You, you add carriers and you add customers and like you put those two together and you win, right? Um, now there's there's obviously more to it, but I need I need our ability to, to continue to add customers. And so when you add something like Parade, even for the sheer fact that I can see executed data, because Parade really sits on top of the TMS, right? And I think I think Victoria hit it perfectly when she says it's it's not the replacement for the TMS, it's in addition to the TMS. And I think when you have that one-stop shop for a rep that they can identify very specifically, what did this lane run for previously and what was the price? And now I can ping my pricing engine and say, okay, what is the price that should be on this lane? Am I winning or losing on this lane? I think now you have the ability to put the... Um, efficiency in the hands of the rep that is on that versus the old way of doing business. It was, you had to be in this business for a long time to know what lane ran at what and who was doing it and what the carrier, like you take all of that away. And now you essentially make every single rep on the floor an efficient broker that they can go find that right carrier at the right price every single time. And, and actually 
it, it's helped with the negotiation, right? Because if I know specifically what carrier ran it previously and I have a carrier that either I've called or that it's been matched up or that you know I want to onboard, well, now the power's in my hands because I can see very specifically what's going on with that given lane on previous carriers and, uh, and what the market conditions are doing. So absolutely, it's improved efficiency. Absolutely, it's allowing our folks to be on the phone more with customers. Um, and I think Parade's motto in terms of uh, you know being able to win more freight really is there, not only from the standpoint of some of the tools they have, but from the sheer standpoint that my folks are flipping very quickly off the carrier side and into the customer side. I was just going to add a second note to that, but Dave made a comment that there are a lot of reps that are in the seat that are in the seat that don't have much logistic experience coming into this role. The nice thing about Parade is that we're literally providing their reps a stacked rank list of who they're calling, why they're calling them throughout their whole entire day. And then on top of that, we're also giving them a list of the carriers that have quoted on their freight. We're showing them the list of carriers that have actually already digitally booked on their freight. So if a rep has, for the example, 10 loads to cover, how Parade is going to act is two out of 10 of those loads, they got digitally booked. Reps didn't lift a finger. Three out of 10 of those loads, they received quotes, while the rest, the reps will just log into Parade and have that stacked rank list providing them who they're calling, why they're calling. So it's like they have a senior broker sitting right next to them showing them their agenda for the day. Yeah, and that was something that I heard and I immediately thought of because every office, every brokerage has that guy that's been doing it for 30 years. He's no, He knows everything inside and out. And you know, he has to still get his job today. And if you're sitting there trying to figure out how to price something, you can't just shoot a, shoot a note over to Joe and say, hey, Joe, like, is this about right for this? And like, if Joe's off for that day, you should still be able to win loads and price things accordingly. And it just kind of takes all that institutional pricing knowledge in his head and puts it for everyone to, um, you know, access. And it's just kind of, you don't have to bother everybody about it, but Joe is still around. So that way when that inevitable weird thing happens of like, I've never seen this before, how do we handle it? I guarantee Joe has seen it and is like, oh, we just send a note here, do this because it's never, it's never a real fun day in brokerage until something goes wrong. And I kind of like that. Um, I kind of like that there's that automation component to it because when inevitably something goes wrong and your day gets completely blown up, you're you're still booking freight. You still have stuff that's just working for you behind the scenes while you're handling, um, you know, a toxic dumpster on fire, uh, trying to not, you know, get a shipment lost or make a customer really angry. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. Um, and I think that one of the things that we talk a lot about when new folks are coming in is, you know, you know, what are the characteristics of somebody that's good inside of brokerage? And, and inevitably, we talk about time management, right? Your ability, to, especially in a cradle to grave model, your ability to know when to call a customer versus when to engage with a carrier versus, you know, when a fire is going on, what is really a fire. And we talk through a lot of that stuff. But when you think of time management, a lot of time when we look at our reps is spent in that carrier side of things, right? I want to load from a customer. I'm really excited. Oh my gosh, how do I go cover this load now? What do, what do I do? Who, who do I call first? Do I post it? Do I wait for somebody to call? What's that look like, right? And, and, and every brokerage, you know, will tell you, be on the phones, call the carriers, own the leverage. All of those things are important. But I think the important thing on Parade is that it now allows some of that some of those lessons that you learn naturally through time in terms of what time management is and when to call carriers and what that actually looks like and when you own the leverage versus when they own the leverage, um, it now takes some of that and puts it into a technology-based system that is getting smarter and allows us very quickly to see who is utilizing technology versus who is simply relying on old ways of doing things. And I think what you see on that is you do see your increase in loads covered in a given day, you see the right carriers being put on the load versus just purely loads being covered. Um, and you see overall margins improve based on the fact that you have all of this technology behind the scenes that is getting smarter. And so now in terms of the ability to learn that time management piece over a course of years, you've taken that and taken somebody fresh out of school and given them this tool and allowed them to be very successful. And what's the first way to an account executive's heart? through their checkbook, right? And so the more that you can put into their checkbook and the more that you can allow technology to do it, right? It almost becomes an annuity for that person where they know in the background, this technology is always working for them. 
Um, and then expand that out onto nights and weekends, right? I mean, at some point you have to give folks a time off. Um, and we used to say back in the brokerage back in the day, which is where do you make your money? You make your money on the weekends. Well, this tool now allows you the opportunity to have something working for you uh, on the weekends um, and and help you cover that freight that maybe you got last minute on a Friday and has a Monday pickup. Absolutely. I think it's one of those, um, it's kind of that, it's I, to me, it would almost become a game of like, how much can I have Parade work for me? Or how can I have this software work for me without me actually having to do that much? Because if I can offload half my workload to just Parade running it, and maybe I just review a few quotes or, um, you know, just kind of not really be super hands-on with half of the workload that I have for that day, then I suddenly have a better work-life balance where I'm not, I'm not pulling 14-hour days. I can just have that software working for me. And I think that's truly that that's almost like immeasurable that value that it brings and i think you said it well earlier when you made that uh joe example but you know if if we want to automate the low-hanging fruit we want to automate the the tedious manual tasks that are taking reps two minutes here two minutes there and we want to eliminate that and this way you know being a brokerage it's an art and a science if we can eliminate some of the science piece we want you to be able to focus on the art piece, and that's developing those relationships, taking on more shippers, whatever the case may be. A brokerage as an art form. I think I like that. I think that should be the trend for 2023 is how can your brokerage make its own kind of art? I like it. So we are running out of time today, but there are isn't a, there's a question that everyone that comes on the show has to answer, and you two are no exception. So uh, Dave, we'll start with you. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Super philosophical question. Um, I don't know. I think I have to answer it with additional questions. Um, I would say that a sandwich would include bread. So by definition, is a hamburger a sandwich? And I, that's tough. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to go with yes for the sheer one piece. It has bread. Anything with bread equals sandwich. And it doesn't matter if it's a Subway sandwich or if it's a hot dog, it's a sandwich. So let's Let's go with that for final answer. Okay, I like it. I like it. Victoria, what about you? Is a hot dog a sandwich? I'm going to go with no. And my reasoning is that a sandwich has two pieces of bread and a hot dog has one because it's a bun. <laughs> I'm also a team. It's not a sandwich because, again, when you go to like a deli to get a sandwich, you're not you don't see hot dogs and hamburgers on the menu. You just see like, you know, maybe some good cold cuts. Every once in a while, I might get crazy and have like chicken tenders on a sandwich, but for the most part, you know, it's not a it's not a thing. I think I just heard my new business proposition. I'm opening a deli with with hot dogs. I got it. That's <laughs> it. So it starts. <laughs> I think uh, I think as long as you don't try to open or expand to the city of Chicago, you might be all right. They have some very strong feelings about their hot dogs there. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Dave, if anyone wants to reach out about the Ryder Brokerage or, you know, the new hot dog deli shop, where can they find you outside the show? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, please ping me there. Um, otherwise, uh, my Ryder email is just dkstone at rider.com. Feel free to ping me, engage with me. Love to talk to you about it. Awesome. And Victoria, if anyone wants to slide into those DMs about Parade or your take on hot dogs and sandwiches, where can they find you outside the show? Absolutely. You can find me on LinkedIn at Victoria Tommy. And then also my email is just Victoria at Parade.ai. So love to connect. Awesome. You guys heard it here first. We have a split hot dog as a sandwich decision, um, but ultimately two people that are very knowledgeable in the brokerage space and are more than happy to lend an ear or give a suggestion anywhere you need it. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Buy and check out the podcast anywhere you get your podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Don't forget to check out all the other incredible FreightWaves pod podcasts, such as Point of Sale and Great Quarter Gals. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter on FreightWaves.com slash check call. See you on the internet.